Hello and welcome to Thought for August the 22nd. Our readings are 1 Kings chapter 17, Jeremiah chapter 43, and 1 Corinthians chapters 1 and 2. And our thought is, in the presence of God. Today we start reading the first letter to the Corinthians. There are many believers there, and Paul had spent much time there, and his letters to them totaled 29 chapters, containing a great many lessons appropriate for us today. The return of the Lord was very much in his mind, but he had no idea when. He was ultimately to tell Timothy in his last letter, of all, that I have fought a good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord will reward me on that day. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. His words to the Corinthians are a tremendous example of his efforts for the good fight, and the race is centred on helping others. In so doing, we help ourselves. Our Lord is the outstanding example for us. We read today how Paul tells the believers that they are to wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Chapter 1, verses 7 to 9. God is faithful to those who are doing their best to be faithful to Him. They develop a real fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. But there is disharmony in Corinth, and Paul's appeal is for them to be united in the same mind and the same judgment. Verse 10. Sadly, the failure to do this happens in every generation. It seems there have to be foolish virgins. It brings to mind John's words in his epistle, They went out from us, but they were not of us, that it might become plain, that they all are not of us. Chapter 2, verse 19. To clearly see those who are of us, we need to fill our minds with God's word, and we will see those who are truly faithful to what has been revealed. We do not push out others. They end up going out of their own accord. But we may, by God's grace, turn some around. Christ sent him, he tells the Corinthians, to preach the gospel not with words of eloquent, that is, human wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. Verse 17. As he told the Galatians, God preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham. Chapter 3, verse 8. And we come to see that God's message to us begins in Genesis and goes through to Revelation. We note how often Paul quotes from the Old Testament. Verse 19 is an example. He quotes Isaiah 29, verse 14. It is written, he says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. We live in a world today full of its own wisdom and discerning. But notice how Paul makes the point, God chose what is low and despised in the world to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. Verse 28 and 29. God is everywhere present by his Spirit. Remember David's psalm, Psalm 139, and Paul's words on Mars Hill, Acts 17, verse 27 and 28. In this age of iPads and iPhones, we see what power God has put into the air. Paul says, among the mature, we do impart wisdom, although it is not the wisdom of this age, chapter 2, verse 6. It is a secret and hidden wisdom of God. Verse 7. The Bible reveals this more and more clearly as we diligently read, and as a result, we sense more clearly the presence of God in our lives. Are you sensing this more and more clearly? 
as this world descends into chaos, it will be essential to have done this, as well as really knowing his word. Well, thank you once again for joining us for Thought for the Day, where together we can open up the pages of God's word, knowing that word to be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path.